Hello, welcome, 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 welcome back. It's been a long while. I haven't done one of these lives. And you can see on the screen, you can see the title. The title tonight is entitled Nostradamus True or False Prophet. Now, we are not just here to talk about Nostradamus. Right? That's not the reason why we are here, you know. We study scriptures on this channel. Um, and so that's our primary aim. That's our primary objective. But in order for us to set the tone for what we look at tonight, we want to look at this person here, Nostradamus. And the reason why I want to look at this person is that when Queen Elizabeth died, right, he was touted as having a prophecy that actually predicted the exact year and time in which Queen Elizabeth would have died. A lot of persons have heard over the years talk about this man Nostradamus and how he has some interesting prophecies prophecies for every year it appears right but we're gonna look at him shortly who he is um, we're gonna see is he a prophet right we're gonna also look at some of these supposed prophecies that he had um, and does the provide us any bearing or any truth. Now, who is Nostradamus is the first thing we want to look at. And I can see at the top here that Nostradamus was a French astrologer. And so that's not a good start because when you look in the scriptures, you recognize that astrology is something that God himself condemned. Right, so this is not a good start. Now, let's go to Encyclopedia Britannica. One of the most trusted historical sites. And we'll read shortly. Nostradamus, also called Michael D. Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, born December 40, 15. 03 in St. Remy, France, and he died July and he died July the 1st 1566 in Salon. He was a French astrologer and physician, the most widely read seer of the Renaissance. So they do see him then as a prophet true or false prophet will leave till later Nostradamus began his medical practice in Agen sometime in 1530s despite not only never having taken a medical degree but also apparently having been expelled from medical school in 1544 he moved to Salon where he gained renown for his innovative medical treatments. During outbreaks of the plague at Aix and Lyon in 1546-1547, he began making prophecies about 1547, which he published in 1555 in a book entitled Centuries. The work consisted of rhyme quatrains grew into hundreds each set of 100 called a century it says here astrology was then at a peak and an enlarged second edition dedicated to the french king appeared in 1558 so some of his prophecies appear to be fulfilled and his fame became so widespread that he was invited to the court 
of Catherine de Medicis, Queen Consort of Henry II of France, where he cast the horoscopes of her children. He was appointed physician in ordinary by Charles IV in 1564. Nostradamus prophecies were the subject of many commentary. Contrary to popular belief, however, they were never condemned by the congregation of the index, the body set up by the Roman Catholic Church for the examination of books and manuscripts. Because of their cryptic style and content, right? It says the prophecies continue to create much controversy. Right? Some of them are taught by believers to have foretold actual historical events that occurred since Nostradamus' time, including certain details of the French Revolution of the 18th centuries. Others, having no apparent meaning, are said by some to foretold events that have not yet occurred. Right? So that's a short synopsis of this man. Nostradamus. He was touted as being a prophet, but it seems that he was into horoscopes and he was into astrology. And um, that makes him really contradictory to the scriptures because the Bible and the God of the Bible does condemn um, such practices. Right? And so from that alone, we can recognize that Nostradamus might not be a prophet, true prophet sent from God. But don't take my word for it. All right, we're going to look at a few scriptures. But first, let's look at a few of Nostradamus um, cited prophecies. Right, Looking at this right here. And um, notice this interesting, the five predictions of Nostradamus for the year 2023. Now notice this, and at least they're honest on this website, notice this. At the top right here it says, recognize for his prophecies, the latter has already predicted what will happen in 2023, talking about Nostradamus. And here are his conclusions. What are his conclusions? It says, between admirers and detractors, Nostradamus leave no one indifferent. Even centuries after his death, his prophecies continue to fuel conversations. And although these are written in verses called quatrains, they do not refer to specific years and can be difficult to interpret. Hear that? So at least on this website, they're honest that some of these prophecies that you will see people put up, Nostradamus prophecy for 2022, Nostradamus prophecies for 2021, Nostradamus prophecies for 2023, they are honest to say that none of his prophecies actually have time. So what that means is, how oh, can we be certain that this prophecy or this thing that he says um, will actually take place in 2021 or 2022 or 2023? You cannot know. And so you can take any writings of this man and put it in any year you want to put it and say, he did look, he had written this and it had been fulfilled. But it's not been fulfilled like he said, when you look in the Bible prophecies, you recognize that the Bible prophecies have a specific date. We go to Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, and to 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Come to, to pass to the team. You go to Daniel 9. 70 weeks are determined upon Daniel people. At 70 weeks, the Messiah will come. Prophecy was fulfilled to the absolute T. These are what we call prophecies, true prophecies, right? Of a God telling the end from the beginning. 
Now the writings of Nostradamus does not have these set times, right? That he predicted from the 1500 to be fulfilled in 2023 and it come together as it as he had predicted. So these we cannot say are true prophecies. And don't take my word for it. Let's read the Third World War. In any case, this is what he affirmed in his writings. Seven months of great war. People died of evil doing. Moreover, this war will not be without consequences. Now, how can I say that he predicted a world war, a third world war in 2023 from what I've just read a while ago? You cannot. Right? Because all he said that there was supposed to be a great war for seven months. And he did not say the year 2023. And he did not say this would be the third world war. So this tell you that this is just some writing someone take and say it has been fulfilled here, it has been fulfilled there, but there is no substance to it. Right, notice this, the first steps on the planet Mars, he also predicted that according to his followers. But now, notice what it, it says. It is not for nothing that his texts refer to a light on Mars which falls. So according to this writing where he says that there was a light on Mars, they take this to mean that Nastana was predicted that man would eventually step on the moon. Right? And again, this is just a, a small, right, five words right here that they are taken out of context and applied to 2023, right? And for a majority of his prophecies, they are exactly like this. They take a small statement and say, this is, it has been fulfilled here, he had predicted it to fulfill here, right? But when you look at his writing, it seemed like he was just writing in general. Trying to say this will happen there, that will happen there. It's something that any one of us can do. Now, when we, let's go to the Bible shortly. Let's look at a few things from the Bible. It does give us right principles and which we can know for a certain. Right? Who is a true prophet? Who is a false prophet? Right? So go with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Right? Notice here in Deuteronomy. 18 verse 9 first when thou art come into the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shall not learn to do after the abomination of those nations there shall not be found among you any that make his son or his daughter pass through the fire or that use it divination or an observer of times right so you see these two here observer of times and divination and these are the things that Nostradamus practice divination telling the future in advance are believing that you have the ability to tell the future in advance as in being a prophet right but you were not anointed by God so this is what he did he did divination but he was also an astrologer right he read the horoscope what that means is he was an observer of times. In other words, he observed the stars, right? Um, because that's what astrologers do. They observe the signs. They observe the stars of heaven. So according to the Bible, he was discredited then from being a true prophet, right? And we have seen that what the things that people say are prophecies, they are not actual prophecies. Now, in Deuteronomy 18, verse 19, the scripture says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he sh shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Right? And um, in Deuteronomy 18, from verse 15 down to 19, primarily was talking about Christ, and Christ in the sense of being a prophet right but now in verse 20 it says but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which i have not commanded him to speak of that shall speak in the name of other gods even that prophet shall die 
right? And then it says here in verse number 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord had not spoken? Right, so the people, the question is clear. How can we know, right, who are false prophets? And how can we know who are true prophets? That's the question. And then it says here in verse 22, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, now come to pass that is the thing which the lord had not spoken but the prophet had spoken it presumptuously thou shalt not be afraid of him right so according to verse 22 when a prophet speak in the name of the lord whatever he speak must come to pass right but if what he speak did not come to pass the scripture says he does make that up by himself so don't be afraid of him now in numbers chapter 12 right God tell us some more about what we can know what true prophet is who a false prophet is now in numbers 12 and verse 6 the scripture says and he said Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. So the true prophets of God, they also get dreams and get visions, right? All of us get dreams, right? And not all of our dreams are prophetic, right? Some persons tend to mix that up, right? And so they get a dream. Right, which which denote a message from God, right? They now say that they are prophets, right? And now persons are following them. Right? But the true prophets of God, whatever dream, whatever vision they get, will be in alignment with what the other prophets had prophesied earlier. Also. Because it is mentioned. In 1 Corinthians 14, down to verse, it says this, down to verse 31, 32. For we may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So what is this saying? This is saying that whatever a prophet of God speak, right, it should be, must be in alignment with the other prophets of God says. Now, how does this play out? Let's look at how this play out in the Bible. Go with me to Revelation. We're in Revelation, right? I'm going to read Revelation 13, verse 1, down to verse 3. And it states, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power his seat and great authority and i saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was ill and all the world wandered after the beast now we read that and remember in our head the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets so now let's go remembering that let's go to Daniel let's go to Daniel chapter 7 beginning at verse number 1 it says here in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters 
Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great bees came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and eat with the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And I behold another beast, a second like unto a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they had said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6. After this I behold, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given it. Right? And after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now the reason I read this is to show you that the spirit of John, the prophet, was subject to the spirit of the other prophets. And in this case, the other prophet, right, that John's spirit was saying the same thing was Daniel. Notice, I make ample time in going through this right here to show that what John saw was the same as what Daniel saw. And that's what it means. The spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophets. Right? And if we had time, we could go into more examples of how that principle plays out so whatever god will reveal to a prophet today is the same as what he has revealed to prophets in time past right and so they should be identical right now turn with me to amos amos chapter 3 verse 7 states Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So if God is going to carry out judgment, vengeance, God will reveal these to his servants, the prophets. So those who God reveal his secret to is his servants, the prophets. So if a man is not a servant, of the true and living God. How can the true and living God give him prophecies? Let's move on. In 1 Thessalonians 5, the Bible had this to say. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. So, from what I've covered a while ago, a person might be thinking like, there's no true prophet existing in the world today. So, I don't want nothing to do with prophecy. The Apostle Paul counsel to the church at Thessalonica is the counsel to us today. Quench not the spirit. Do not despise a person who is prophesying. Right? But prove all these the things that they are saying. Right? And hold fast to the things that are good that they say. But if what they say is evil, or what they say is leading to evil, then you have to abstain from all the appearance of evil. Right? And you know that's a false prophet. So you don't go. Right, and go and sit and listen to his teachings anymore because his teachings are not coming from God. When Jesus Christ was here on the earth, when he was just about ready to depart from the earth, just before his crucifixion, 
he gives some potent warning to his people about the last day. And he says this in Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Right? So for a great majority of the time, we recognize that some persons who say they are prophets, you know, you realize that there's nothing to them. But Jesus tells us that there was coming a time when false prophets will work miracles. Right? And that it's only those fortified, only those who have made Christ their anchor will not be deceived. That's all bad it's going to be in the last times, according to what Jesus said. Earlier in his ministry, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, Christ talking about how we can know who is a true or a false prophet. He had this to say. Not by signs and wonders, because remember, we just read a while ago. In the last days, signs and wonders will be one of the decisive um, tools used by Satan to deceive people into accepting his teachings. Matthew 7, 15 states, Be aware of false prophets, right? Which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So false prophets will come to you looking like true prophets. You shall know them by their fruits. What? Or would we know them? By their fruits. Do men get a grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. So what this means, someone come, I'm a prophet. Look at what they are teaching. Look at the result of what they are teaching. Look at their lifestyle. And then you would know if they are a true prophet. Because if they are a true prophet, they would bring forth good fruits. If they are not a true prophet, they would bring forth evil fruits. Verse 17 says, Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not 